This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, and welcome to the Word of God Baptist Church, where we are witnessing the Word boldly to a wounded world. I am Reverend Anthony Carwell, and I am pleased to be your worship leader for this morning. And certainly, we are grateful to God. Uh, we are grateful to him for yet another opportunity to come into his house and to experience him through the tool of corporate worship. And certainly we are especially grateful on this morning for this is not a ordinary Sunday. Now, uh, we believe that every Sunday that God gives us is a blessing from him, but this particular Sunday is a great Sunday for this is Resurrection Sunday. And Resurrection Sunday is the Sunday where all baptized believers in Jesus Christ across the globe come together and with everything within our hearts, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and risen Savior. Listen, on Friday it was a bad day for us as we reflected on the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Our hearts were filled with sadness and sorrow as we remembered the agony and pain that Jesus felt as he endured the brutality of the cross. Our hearts were filled with, with pain and sorrow and even guilt and shame as we reflected on the fact that Jesus was innocent and that he did not die for something that he did but he died for our sin of disobedience. And he died for our inability to reconcile ourselves with God. Yes, Friday was a bad day for us, for it was filled with sorrow and shame. But thanks be to God that Friday was only a pit stop and not a destination. Thanks be to God that we believe beyond a shadow of doubt that the Bible is true, that early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands as God, our Heavenly Father, resurrected his son Jesus from the dead. And certainly, that is what we come to celebrate this morning, the power of his resurrection. Yes, we come to celebrate the power of his resurrection. And we are excited that we do not have to celebrate on our own. 
that so many of you have decided to come and help us to lift up the name of our Lord and risen Savior. So we would like to say to all of the fine members of the Word of God Baptist Church, we are glad that you're here and welcome to worship. We would like to say to all of our family and friends, both near and abroad, we are glad that you're here and we welcome you to worship. For all of you who are worshiping with us for the first time or our returning guests, we are glad that you are here. And on the behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. John L. McCoy, we would like to welcome you to the Word of God Baptist Church and welcome you to the worship of our God. And certainly we know that you could be any place on this morning, but we are glad that you are here with us on this morning. So since we are all here to do the same thing, we invite you to worship. We ask that you would push aside your coffee table, that you would stand to your feet and lift up your hands and lift up your voices and lift up your hearts so that we may praise and worship our God. For God is good. No, no, wait a minute. I didn't say hell to the Redskins. I said God is good. And certainly he is worthy to be praised for every praise. I say every praise. Every praise is to our God. We welcome you to worship. He has risen, he has risen, he has risen just as he said. And because of such, we can continue to look unto the hills from which cometh our help. For we realize our help cometh from the Lord, for he is the creator and maker of all earth. And I know that to be certain for one day, he resurrect my soul from the dead, for he is my shepherd. And David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My feet will stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth give us a moment of silence in respect of him. Our scripture for this morning is coming from the gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 1 through 12. And it reads as follows. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulcher, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles and their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass, the blessed word. Let us pray. Eternal God, our heavenly Father, it is at this moment in time that we come in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, to just say thank you. We thank you for your wonderful love. We thank you for your tender mercies. And we thank you for this day which we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And as we come together to engage in worship, we pray for the manifestation of your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit will lead us and will guide us 
as we render service unto you. We want to give you our very best because you gave the very best that heaven had to offer in your son, Jesus the Christ, who died for the sins of the world and was raised from the dead. So we celebrate on this day and we thank you for all that you have done for us, what you are doing and for the things that we have yet to bear witness to. So we just pray that you will have your way and that we will enjoy fellowship and a worship experience like no other. Holy Spirit, saturate the sanctuary and keep us in your care as we do all things that are pleasing in your sight. Glory to your name, God. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. The reflection on the daily bread this morning is entitled In the Garden by Allison Keaton. The scripture used for the daily bread comes from John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. Allison Keaton starts by referring to the hymn In the Garden, written by Charles Austin Miles, who wrote this song after reading the 20th chapter of John. The hymn writer stated that as he read the passage, he felt that he was part of the scene, that he silently witnessed the moment when Mary Magdalene recognized her risen savior. In the text, Mary went to the tomb where two days prior they placed Jesus after his death on the cross. As she arrived to pay respect, she discovered it was empty and burst into tears. Someone asked her why she was crying, and she gave an answer but was not aware who she was speaking to. In her grief, she assumed she was speaking to the gardener, but it turned out to be Jesus himself. Sadness turned to gladness once she realized Jesus was alive. My takeaway from this daily bread is there are many times in our lives when we simply do not recognize Jesus. Pain and problems blind us to who he truly is and the fact that he is right there. When Jesus said her name, she instantly knew it was him. Have the cares and conditions we grapple with caused us not to notice the presence of Jesus? Have our tears blurred our vision to where we do not see him? If so, then we can take comfort in the fact that Jesus knows our name. When he calls us, we too, like Mary, will realize that he lives and he is right here. How fitting that in the beginning, when things took a wrong turn in the Garden of Eden, that the one mistaken for a gardener is the very one who set everything back in order. The refrain from the hymn in the garden goes as follows. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me, I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known on this day where we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. May we all move beyond the sadness and sorrow of pain and suffering and rejoice in the comfort that comes from knowing an empty grave proves our savior lives. And let us see him in a brand new way. Amen. This is the reflection of the Daily Bread. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you with the awesome privilege and honor to lead us in the commemoration and celebration of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, through our observance of Holy Communion. And what a better Sunday to observe communion 
than on the Sunday that we celebrate his great resurrection. And certainly here at the Word of God Baptist Church, we consider this holy ordinance of the church to be one of the most sacred ceremonies of the Christian faith. And every time we approach this sacred supper, we do so with a high sense of sobriety and reflection as we understand the importance of this great command to observe this great ordinance. Now here at the Word of God Baptist Church, we observe what is called an open communion. And what that means is that any baptized believer in Jesus Christ who has committed their lives to him may participate with us in this sacred supper. Therefore, if you desire to observe on this morning, we ask that you will pull up your chair to the table as there is room for you. So we ask now that you would prepare your sacred elements, bread or bread substitute, fruit of the vine, so that as we pray, we may observe this holy communion. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come thanking you for this day and this opportunity to observe this sacred supper. And Father, we pray now that you would consecrate this moment, that this moment will be a true God moment. Father, we pray now for the elements, the bread which represents your son's body and the fruit of the vine which represents his shed blood. And Father, we ask that you would etch these emblems in our hearts and our minds and our soul that as we sojourn here on earth attempting to reflect your glory in the world that we will remember the awesome price and cost for our salvation. Father, we pray now that you would do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, to sanctify this moment that no flesh may tarry in your sight. Father, we thank you and we give your name to praise. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. And after he had quieted the conversation, he took the bread and after he had blessed it, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat of his body. After the same manner also, he took the cup, and after he supped, said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink it, do it in the remembrance of me. Let us drink of his blood. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come thanking you for this blessed opportunity to reflect and remember the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And Father, we thank you for showing up and showing out as you always do. And our prayer now as we go out and do battle, as we go out and be used by you to draw all men to yourself, Jesus told us that when he would ascend back to heaven, that greater works will we do because he goes to his Father. So, Father, we ask now that as we go out into the world to do battle, that you would do greater works through us and in us. 
and with us. We thank you for this time that we've been able to share. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the portion of our worship service where we will have our faith increased as we listen to the preach word of God. And I ask now that you would grab your Bibles and your notepads as we prepare ourselves to hear the text for this morning and receive the title of our message. Our text for this morning is found in the New Testament, New Testament epistle of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 through 20. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 through 20. And the word of God reads, For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessings will I bless you, and multiplying will I multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end to all dispute. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuse to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of our soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become the high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. On this morning, uh, the title of our message will be Anchored, Part One. Anchored, part one. After the conclusion of our song of preparation, the next voice you will hear will be that of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. John L. McCoy. Hear ye him. Come on, sing it like it's Sunday morning. Say, all the blood. Yes, Lord. is gone away yeah. again but don't worry he's coming back he's again Jesus is gone away but he's coming back again Jesus is gone away but don't worry he's coming back yeah yeah thank you Lord come on say it again Jesus is gone away yeah he's coming back again I can't wait to see him he's coming back again This one right here. Listen, watch it. I said there is power. Yeah. Where is it? In the blood. Come on and sing it. Say, power. Yeah, yeah. 
of your life, you know this isn't. And there is healing. healing. Yeah. It's in the blood. You can find it in the blood of Jesus. There's healing. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the blood. And just in case the devil stole it from you, there is your joy. And it's in the blood. Telling me I can find joy, wonder working, yeah, in the presence. Now, listen, tell me what can wash away your sins? Yeah, I got some testimonies on this side. Certainly, we want to say good morning to the beloved members of Word of God Church. We thank God for our presiding officiant, Brother Anthony Cardwell. We thank God for Assistant Pastor Daniel, for Ryan, and for our worship team. It's certainly good to be here, and we wish all of our members a happy Resurrection Sunday, and we can say that we are blessed and have been blessed to see another Resurrection Sunday. Uh, we thank God for Brother Cardwell who read our text and our focus on today as we begin this series will be on verse 19 of our text, which reads, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into, entereth that within the veil. And we are utilizing as a topic, as Brother Codwell has indicated, anchored, and we will say this is part one, which is an introduction. Each of us, has endured a year unlike any other. First, there was a pandemic of a lifetime, a pandemic that has to date taken over 550,000 of our friends and loved ones. Then, we had to endure a president that has turned American against American, black against white, and white against Asian. Then there was the emergence 
of white supremacist groups, groups like the Proud Boys and the Three Percenters. Then there was the shooting of George Floyd, the Black Lives Matter movement, and even as we speak here today, there is a trial uh, being conducted this month that focuses on the perpetrator of the death of George Floyd. In addition, there were the conspiracy theories, such as those set forth by Q Anon and the far right. Then there were the three mass shootings within the past three weeks. Then there was a presidential election that almost half the nation believes was rigged. In addition, there was the unprecedented storming of the Capitol as January the 6th, 2021 will be a day that will live in infamy. And then we have, as we speak, the 500 plus migrant children dropped off at the United States border every day, seeking to escape the crime, the poverty and horrors of living in a chaotic country. Yes, there is no doubt that we have had to endure a turbulent year, which is an understatement. And we, the members of the Word of God Church, have had to come to grips with the pain of losing so many persons who, quite frankly, we were not ready to let go. Persons like McKinley Cobb, persons like Eddie Humphrey Jr., persons like Joanne Walker, like Carrie Jackson, like Joseph Gilmore, like Minister Idell Jones, like William Martin, like Deacon Michael Williams, like Harold Witt, and most recently, Mother Lily Young. And sadly, as we move further into 2021, there seems to be no end in sight as relates to those things that make us anxious that stress us out and certainly depress us. They certainly make us want to holler and throw up both our hands. And I know that utilizing that statement dates me as relates to this kind of music. So the question, the question becomes, how can we handle the anxiety? How can we handle the stress and depression brought on by such a year? How can we look to the future with hope instead of fear? How can we extract joy out of such sorrow and misery all around us? How? Can we get through the foreboding calamities that are yet to come? Well, the writer of our text seems to suggest that in order to continue to endure that which is coming upon the earth, things that threaten our sanity and mental well-being, our souls must be anchored. Strangely, this is the only passage of scripture in the Bible that directly mentions being anchored. Anchored both 
as a verb and as an adjective and also as a noun. So what is an anchor? And what is an anchor designed to do? Well, as a noun, an anchor on a ship is designed to hold it steady in place, in a place of safety, in the midst of turbulent storms and contrary winds. Secondly, an anchor is designed to keep the ship from drifting into dangerous rocky reefs and dangerous territories that will tear it apart and run it aground as with a ship that has struck and the ship that we remember from this past week that was stuck in the Suez Canal. Likewise, our anchor is designed to perform the same task, wow. to keep us grounded, grounded in a place of safety in the midst of the dangerous storms and contrary emotional winds, wow. and to keep us from drifting into stress, drifting into anxiety, drifting into panic when the storms of life are raging. The author of the book of Hebrews suggests that if we are going to remain steady, wow. if we're going to remain sane and secure in such times as we live today, we must be anchored. And as we stated a few weeks ago, we are not all in the same boat. We are all in the same storm, but certainly we're not all in the same boat. Some of us are in rowboats, rowboats that are tossed and driven by every wind and doctrine, trying to steer them ourselves. Some of us tend to drift into reefs and rocks by every news flash on the evening or nightly news. Some of us run aground and are destroyed by every death notice that we hear about, and some of us are so emotionally frail and fragile until we fear that we cannot take another notice of bad news. Therefore, my challenge to the members of our congregation and all, all of those who are finding our rowboats drifting into dangerous waters, waters like fear, emotional and mental illness, yeah. that we must make sure that our vessels are seaworthy. Yeah. To use the word from the classic film Jaws, some of us are going to need a bigger boat because bigger boats navigate storms much better than canoes and rowboats. Bigger boats have stronger, heavier anchors. And may I add, in addition to bigger boats with stronger, heavier anchors, we're going to need a better captain. This is why the songwriter wrote, in times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Therefore, from the outset of this series entitled Anchored, may I suggest that the bigger boat is the church, the stronger anchor is the gospel, and the better captain is Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, baptized in Jordan, crucified on Calvary, 
died as a criminal, raised on a Sunday, and he's the only one that can step, step on the deck of our boats and say to the wind and to the waves, peace be still. Therefore, we must be determined to be anchored, not because Dr. Fauci has assured us that by July 4th, we may be able to have a cookout with our families, not because we've got now COVID-19 shot, not because we have a new presidential administration, not because we have a relatively secure job, or because death has not visited our families yet. No, if we're going to maintain our minds and endure the storms that are sure to come, we must be anchored in the law. Our text comes from the book of Hebrews. This book is designed to encourage the Jews who received Christ, but because of trouble and persecution, they were thinking about going back to Judaism, their own older religion. In our focus chapter, Hebrews 6.1, Paul was encouraging them not to go back, but to press on to perfection. Because Christians, or Christianity, is superior, Paul said, to the old system. Christ is better than the angels better than Moses because he created both. Paul was saying that the priesthood of Christ is better than the priesthood of Aaron, for the sacrifice on Calvary was once and for all. In short, the writer was saying, there is no more to be gained in Christ, or there is more to be gained in Christ than in the old system. This book is also written to most of us. Those who win the storms of life begin to rage. Think about going back to what we call the good old days and our sinful ways. But in order to stay with Christ in times like these and press toward perfection in him, I tell you again, we must be anchored in him. Anchored in the promises of God. Anchored in the purpose that God has for our lives so that we can enjoy the protection of God. Our text begins with God swearing. I say our text begins with God swearing, making an oath to believers in Christ that he will bless us like he blessed Abraham. Verse 14 says that God says, surely blessings I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. Our text gives us three guarantees from Christ that will never change, and they are his promises, his purpose, and his protection. Here God gives us blessed assurance that what he promises he will surely perform because in verse 14 he says surely blessings I will bless thee and multiplying I will multiply thee. And to just reinforce his promises and support his claim in the previous verse the writer gives us an example by saying God is giving us his word. God is making us a solemn promise. He is making us a sacred oath. And then he adds in verse 18 that it is impossible for God to lie. It says when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater he swore by himself. Therefore, if God gives his word and swears by himself that he will perform it 
swearing by the highest name in the universe, his name, he will surely do that which he promises to do. Now, you say, that's not possible. But the Bible teaches us that it is impossible for God to lie. There are two things we want to take note of in verse 17. And they are God's unchanging purpose, which we will discuss on next week, and the fact that the blessings of God are for the heirs of what he called the promise. Notice God calls us heirs, meaning those things that have been promised to us have nothing to do with us. Therefore, we haven't done anything to earn what we receive. We know that the promises of God will just fall to us as a result of the relationship we have with our benefactor. God's most important promise to us is found in John 3.16. It says, for God so loved the world. The first thing he promises is that he loves us. And then he says he so loved the world. And I know this hurts the races. The races hates this promise because the world includes all of us, black, white, Asian or Hispanic. When God says he so loved the world, yes, he includes the African-American as well. And he loves us because of our relationship with his only begotten son. Therefore, we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, our big brother. So we see that that which God promises are unchangeable. They are confirmed by God making an oath. Therefore, as we read verse 12, we are cautioned to be not slowful, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. And this is why God declared through Paul in Romans 4.21, he informs us those things that God promises he is able to perform, but we must not be slowful or impatient. And then as we jump to verse 18, the writer informs us that there are two immutable, specific things that God promises us. Now we know that immutable means they are unchangeable. And so therefore, God assures us firstly that he will bless us like he blessed Abraham. And secondly, he will multiply our blessings just like he did Abraham. God blessed Abraham with many offspring, including our Savior. He is blessing believers today with over 7,000 promises. And of course, one of them is the promise of eternal life. I don't know about you, but I'm dropping my anchor right there. Because if God said it, that settles it as far as I am concern. And therefore, even in turbulent days, the days in which we live, I'm determined to be anchored and stay anchored in the Lord. Therefore, this series of messages will focus on getting anchored, anchored by God's word, anchored by his son, and anchored by God's solemn promise. Anchored to the point that we can stand and look the devil straight in the eye and say, I shall not be moved. And this is why we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For in dying for our sins and raised on the third day, he reversed the curse. We must understand the mystery of what happened out there on Calvary. The mystery that we must understand and, and intake and absorb if we can fully live out the great promises of God. 
Notice first that Ryan mentioned in his daily word that Mary mistook Jesus as the gardener. And perhaps this is why that it was where sin had its genesis in a garden. Therefore, Mary mistook Jesus as a gardener. And therefore, since sin began in a garden, then it's obvious that Jesus must be a gardener to reverse the curse. Jesus was, again, the second Adam. For the first Adam could not fix what he had done. So God put the sacrifice back on the tree. And that's why Jesus had to be crucified on a tree. Firstly, he was crucified on wood that came and was taken from a tree. That was to reverse the sin of Adam and Eve who stole the forbidden fruit from the tree. And that's why Jesus became the first fruit returning what was taken from the tree. Then notice where they nailed his hands on the cross. This represents the hands that stole the fruit from the tree. And then they nailed his feet. And this was to represent that Jesus was, to, was going to be the seed of the woman that will one day crush the head of the serpent that enticed the first couple who ate from the tree. Then Jesus was pierced in his side, which represented the salvation of the woman that was taken from Adam's side. Then they placed the crown of thorns on his head, which represented reversing the curse of the curse of creation, the ground that produced thorns and thistles. And therefore, when he rose, it signified that we will be raised also. And surely, right now, if we are in Christ, we will get to know the power of his resurrection. And therefore, as we look back on what this year has stolen from us, yes, we have tears of sadness with the persons, and of course, because of the persons that we lost. But understand, it's understandable to be lonely, but understand that they too were anchored in the Lord. Mary Maxwing was anchored in the Lord. McKinley Cobb, anchored in the Lord. Eddie Humphrey Jr., anchored in the Lord. Joanne Walker, anchored. Carrie Jackson, anchored. Joseph Gilmore, anchored. Idell Jones, anchored. William Martin, anchored in the Lord. Michael Williams, anchored in the Lord. Harold Witt, anchored in the Lord. Lily Young, anchored in the Lord. And that's why I can say with my whole heart in it that my soul is anchored in the Lord. I tell you, though the storms keep raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the, the night from day, I can say hallelujah because my soul is anchored in the Lord. Amen. If the storms don't cease And if the winds keep on blowing Let us bow our heads. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we come 
this Resurrection Sunday, commemorating that which you have done for us through your son Jesus the Christ some 2,000 years ago. Rely, Lord, that you was, you is, and you will forever be the anchor that will hold all mankind and everything in place. Even though the storms of life continue to rage, Lord, we ask that you will help us through. We repent of our sins, Lord, for we realize that we are committed sin by omission, commission, word, thought, or deed. And after thou forgive us, anoint us afresh. Pray that you will bless those who are has listened to the message, Lord, that you will strengthen them. Some might be weary from the pains in the body. Some might have problems, Lord, that their heart have seen to a loss in rhythm. Some eyesight and their feet step have gotten short, Lord, but we know that you are able. You're one that have never lost the patience. Pray that thou will undergird them, that thou will strengthen them, that thou will stabilize them, be the anchor. They may might be able to hold on to their change come. I know you're able. I know you're able. For there were times when I too was tossing to and fro. And because I had an encounter with you, Lord. You stabilized me. And I continue to say that you are the anchor that steady stabilized my soul. Pray that I bless those who have lost loved ones. Lord, to continue to allow them to know that their loved ones are just out of sight of man, but Lord, that they will see him. I'll see them one day. Bless us now. Keep us, God. Guide us and direct us. Allow us to feel your joy like never before. This we pray and ask in Jesus' precious name and for his name's sakes. Amen. Amen. Who have you heard? A such a powerful and soul-stirring message that Jesus, the Christ, is the anchor. And though man don't seem to understand how the world twirls, the Lord is the anchor that holds. And as it, he holds the world surely. He can hold you. And I offer you this opportunity to come to him and to confess your sins and accept him and allow him to receive you as your Lord and Savior. He said the door. He is knocking on your door telling you come unto him that he is able to give you rest. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Paul said, if you will confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Will you come? God bless you and may heaven smile richly upon you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the portion of our worship service where we can worship our God through giving. Certainly, we pray that everyone watching on this morning will consider making a sacrifice to God. Our tithes and offering, tithes are 
what they are. Certainly we pay them based upon what we get. Um, but on a day like this, a special day where we celebrate and honor the work that Jesus did on the cross and that the fact that our faith is anchored in the truth that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Certainly that's something worth us giving for. So we ask now that as you reflect on this great day, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to move on your heart to make a capital sacrifice so that the work that God is trying to do in the earth can continue to be funded that he can continue to draw mankind to himself through our total efforts. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come thanking you for this opportunity to give. We ask now that you would move upon our hearts as we give and that you would accept our giving as a form of worship to you. Father, we thank you for the source of income jobs and the way you have allowed us to make a living. We realize that it all comes from you. So as we give back a portion of that which you have given us, we thank you for being our, our rock that we have anchored ourselves to. We thank you for keeping us financially, for meeting all our needs and allowing us to live the abundant life. So Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. Bless us now as we worship you through our giving. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. amen. For all of our members, you know how to give. If you are viewing on today and you desire to be a blessing to God through our ministry, we ask that you would Go to our website at TWOGBC.com. In the middle of the landing page, you will see a tab that says Donate. Click that tab, and you will be able to navigate the Push Pay app so that you may worship God through giving. But we thank you in advance for your giving and for you helping us to continue to do the good work that God has planted us here in University Park, Maryland to do as we're doing our very best to meet the needs of our society. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Certainly we have had a high time in the Lord on this morning and for those of us, especially those of us who have a relationship with God and have been walking with us what God has sent us through our pastor was a very timely message. Pastor is right that we have been through a turbulent storm this past year. But thanks be to God now, he has reminded us that all we have to do is anchor ourselves to him and that everything will be all right. And the beauty of that is, is that God never told us that we weren't going to go through storms. But the truth of the matter is that he tells us that if we stay connect connected and stay anchored, that although we go through storms, that everything will be all right. So we encourage you on this morning to go out and hold on to God as he carries us through our storms. Certainly, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for being here on this morning and for helping us to lift up the name of our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. So we ask that you would go out and continue your celebration, continue to celebrate the fact that our God is not dead, Amen. that he is yet alive. And because he is alive, we can be also. Amen. Until next week, we'll come back and do it all again. May God bless you 
and may heaven smile richly upon you. Go in peace. Let me hear the worshipers! Where's all of my praises? We want to thank each of you for joining our service today. We pray that you were blessed by the message. If you would like to support our ministry, you can send your donations to the Word of God Baptist Church, 6513 Queens Chapel Road, University Park, Maryland, 20782. So on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. John L. McCoy, and all of our members, thank you again for joining us today. And until next week, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Remember, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Every word of worship. Every